Good morning, good morning. Oh, sorry. Good morning, Kiri. Good morning, Kiri. Very good morning, sir. Should we get started right away? Then we lost by few minutes. Yesterday, we went for a restaurant called Uta, O-O-T-A, Uta in Bangalore. So Uta in Kannada means, uh, Uta in Kannada means what? Food. Food. Anyways, let me share my screen. Okay. I shared my screen. Uh, if you are in Bangalore, it is definitely one of the. If you like Karnataka food, if you if you are a, if you are a foodie who would want to experiment, then definitely you should go for this restaurant. Um, so uh, I mean, let photos not deceive you more. Okay, it it is not as glossy as you see on the pictures. Okay? So it is a decent hotel, normal hotel. Uh, yeah, prices were a little on a higher end, uh, but still it was a nice place for alcohol. So, uh, my stomach is upset this morning because normally I, I follow a strict uh, healthy routine, but yesterday somehow I <coughs> crossed the line and that's it. Nothing much to say. So, what does spoil my stomach? Shall we get started, sir? Let's share it again. Uh, finally, after completing and talking about IIS Pass and SAS, yesterday we were talking about compute. So let's let's get into the uh, compute specifics. Let's talk more about compute. Step by step, we will cover a lot of services under compute. Yeah, so everybody are joining. Just give me. Let me know once you see this thing, sure. You see it now, sir? Oh God, finally, yes. Do you see my screen share? Yes. So, uh, we talked about the services yesterday. We were talking about IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. We talked about which services come under infrastructure, which services come under infrastructure. And the compute, virtual machines come under infrastructure. Container com containers come under infrastructure. And the storage, which is our next topic, after after completing computes, sir, storage is our next topic. Then we'll talk about storage specifically. And, and after that, sir, networking is our third topic. So storage, com sorry, compute, storage, networking, because these three are the fundamentals of Azure, you know, or, or building blocks, or you can call it as a foundation, or, or whatever words you want to apply there. 
these are the fundamental these three topics are crucially extremely important storage networking and compute no so yeah, we, we started talking about compute right under compute oh my god lot of services are there and our first topic to start by is virtual machines right and if you all agree let us let us start by virtual machines so okay this is like yeah there it is so uh, virtual machines scale sets app services service fabric functions kubernetes containers all these come under compute sir and different people use this for different purpose different people use it for different purpose and 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 uh, thank you for your eye contest yesterday yeah, yeah these are our main ones that we are going to focus under compute and so as i said without your support it's tough to complete all of them and now by the way uh, by this thursday we'll almost be in good shape with virtual machines because today itself we are starting virtual machines um one by one all services you should be strong at when i say strong not completely strong some of them virtual machines we have to have we have to be very strong sir. no no option no substitute scale sets it's good to know more about scale sets which we will do container sir absolutely important with the modern era and the evolving uh, the way the way people are adapting containers we should be very good at containers so some of them are there which we will focus more some of them are which will focus mildly but end of the day i just want to convey that these all services are under compute all good and sir some of them are ias some of them are pass in this so which is ias which is pass when we read will come to go okay done sir. so with that sir when you build virtual machines please uh, direct topic to the virtual machines now i told you right i will show you a virtual machine demo building a virtual machine in my pc so today first we will build a virtual machine in my pc then we will build a virtual machine on the cloud even you can build a virtual machine in your pc we all do it so so before building virtual machines always ask yourself this couple of questions why am i building this one for what purpose what is the configuration i want who will use this who will be the end user what is the operating system you want on it because microsoft supports whatsapp windows virtual machines also and linux virtual machines also either of them which you want what do you want you just have to decide operating system and like that okay so first of all before we do uh, cloud based virtual machines before we go to that level sir cloud based virtual machines uh, i would want to sorry about this yeah so before we go to cloud based virtual machines sir what i would want to do is show you how to build a virtual machine on a pc and i told you already sir about hyper v remember hyper v so i'll click on start hyper v so i have hyper v installed on my windows operating system i i am opening hyper v now just give me a minute sir this is how hyper v looks like this is how hyper v looks like now so right now this is my pc as i said in my laptop i am going to build one virtual machine before we build virtual machines sir first let me look at how many machines i can create here how many vms can i create it all depends on my server or depends on my pc how powerful it is so uh, you look at it first go to task let's go to task manager in my laptop here is my task manager let me go to uh, performance tab so how much of cpu i have sir? how many cpus i have processors it's on the screen with you 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 32 
Two sockets means on, the, on my motherboard, I have two sockets. So put two processors. Each one is eight plus eight. That means 16, 16 cores and each is a dual dual support. I mean, each, each can support multi-threaded, two threads, two threads, 32 cores. The 32 processors I have, 16 cores I have. This is my laptop configuration from processor point of view. Okay, then what about RAM? RAM I have, okay, decent enough. I have 32 GB of RAM. Uh, so I can build more virtual machines. A hard drive I have, uh, one TB or whatever. So that, that's all we can ignore. So, so I think enough. I think my system is a high end itself. I can definitely create multiple virtual machines. And let me click on new. So, sir, why I'm doing here is because if we see here once, then we will see the same thing in the cloud, sir. Similar options you will find. Only thing is here, I am I am doing everything. I own it. The power crash occurs. I own it. I am responsible. In cloud, Microsoft is responsible. Nothing more than that. So, okay, let's go ahead and create a virtual machine now. Hit next. It's asking, what is the name? I'll call it as uh, Windows uh, VM1. Windows VM1. And, uh, okay. One minute. So in my C drive, sir, in my C drive, in my VMs folder, I want to keep all my virtual machines. That's a location where I prefer to keep. I did. Hit next. It's asking which generation we want. So uh, I would rather go with the uh, first generation itself because second generation requires UEFI based uh, firmware. If I have, it's okay. But most of the times the generation works, works for all of us in your PC or in my PC. I'm going with generation one. It's asking, hey, KD, you have total 32 GB RAM. How much RAM you want to give for this virtual mission? I want to give 2 GB RAM. So. For example, I want to give 2 GB RAM. Right? Yes, sir. Perfect. And then it's asking, in which network you want to keep your system? I can use one default switch that I already have a switch in my system. I'm using a default switch, internal switch. Hit next. And then so it's asking, how much drive? operating system how much drive which operating system you want i told windows already how much drive you want 127 gb sir so from my hard drive only it will take 127 gb and create this mesh hit next do you want to install operating system now itself or you want to install later yeah, your choice you can do now or you can do later hit next and click on finish so this is technically how we create virtual machines so you told how much ram you want you told how much processor you want you told how much hard drive capacity you want. All that you have mentioned and created a VM. So now what are we going to do, sir? Next step. Same, similar configuration. Similar configuration or maybe more, more in configuration. These VMs we will create in the cloud. With your approval. Done? So compute. This comes under Azure Compute. So let's go to portal. So, KD, uh, okay, you will do it, but how will I do? How will you do that? Sir? So first of all, we all need a cloud account. Azure cloud account. We all need Azure cloud accounts. So how to create two options, please. You can use your credit card. A credit card is compulsory and required. Sir. If you don't have, you know what to do. That's it. Grab from someone and, and use that card. Sir. Uh, by the way, so, but but give an instruction to them that they will get a message saying that uh, two rupees has been deducted. And sir, that is not the threatening part. Two rupees they will excuse. But after that, sir, it will also say two lakh, but uh, credit limit uh, something, something something. A message will say two lakh. When people say two lakh, see two lakh, they will like, oh my god, what are you doing with my card? So 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 it's not a panic, sir. It is just a a range of the budget that is allocated for this specific Azure usage. So there, nobody is going to charge a single rupee from the credit card or debit card. Always try your debit cards first. In some cases, ICICI debit card is working. In some cases, uh, Yes Bank debit card worked. In some cases, debit cards are not working. So Katie, how to do it first of all? Sir, very simple. Open a browser. I'm opening Edge browser now. Or any browser. Uh, and Google for Azure free. So in the documentation I have given, I have mentioned with all screenshots. You see that? You saw that? How to create, if you go to the end of the document, I have shown 
how to create a free Azure account. I've already given the instructions, but still uh, just showing you Azure free account. Create your free account today in Azure. So they'll give you a one month. Yeah, this is the one. Sir. They'll give you a one month time to try all the features of Azure. Am I clear, sir? They'll give us one month time to try all the features of Azure. But KD, our course might go beyond one month. Yes, sir. It might go beyond one month. It touches around two, two and a half months. So you may, you might need, you might need three credit cards all in all. But try with the first one, then the second, then the third, or 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 if you don't have a credit card, so there's one more option as well. You can use your office mail ID. You or your friends or anybody. Office mail ID, sir. Uh, when you are registering, right, you have to register with office mail ID, username and password. That also works. It has worked for many of our friends. Any, any questions? I'll stop here because it's an important point. All is exhausted, Kiri. Then it's the same as you go, it is. No, I'm saying, Kiri, uh, all our cards are exhausted and IDs are exhausted. Now I have option of only pay as you go. So pay as you go will be chargeable, right? As you know. So what that means is if you are using a virtual machine for one hour, you have to pay somewhere around 10 rupees. Approximately so cost will be 10 rupees. If you forgot to run the virtual machine and stop it, sir, it runs for the whole day. We lost a 240 rupees. So something like that. So unnecessary. Uh, I would suggest my best not to go with pay as you go or any alternate ca cards or a family or friends or something, you know, we have to do that. So because free account is the most crucial part of this course. And I would recommend to go or, or office mail IDs works. IBM, I don't know, but other companies office mail IDs also work. IBM, no, because you are competitor for Microsoft. I, I, I'm thinking so, so I've never tried with IBM mail ID, but you can try. So. Hey, I think what to do in that case, Kerry, just click on start free, sir. Everyone, click on start free. The class to the sign up. Okay. Mm, I don't want to use this one. Mm. Okay. So it'll ask you to sign up. One minute. Start free. It's not showing another account. One minute. Sir. Yeah. So they'll give us a $200 credit. $200, if it is in India, it is $14,000, uh, 13300 or 14400 something you will get. Sir. Let me switch to, give me a minute. I'll switch to Chrome. Yeah, look at this one, sir. The account that you're going to create will be active for 12 months, 12 months, but budget, that $200 that they gave, right? It active for only one month. Your account will be active for 12 months, but the budget that is given to you, the $100 or $200 or 14,400, whatever amount is given works only for one month. You can try. So instead, of, so instead of creating the account now, when we are about to do some exercises at that instance, if we create, I would it, recommend we, it. I would we recommend would it. save some few days, right? Which is, which is nothing but hardly a day from now. Probably. Yeah, or not that's two days, okay. We are going to start the lab and everything. So okay. then, whenever you are starting the lab at that moment, I would recommend you to do it. So all okay. of you got the concept, right? You just have to go to Azure free account and create a free account. So don't do it now. The day you are starting your lab, on that day, I would recommend you to do it. Anybody are facing any challenges, we'll work on that. No issues. We'll, I'll get to the lab and see why it's not working and all that we can try. But, but this is the place where you have to start. I'm surprised why it's not giving another option. It should show you as a different account. Mm, okay, I'll try. Any, any questions, sir? Fast, because let's go to the topic. You got the point, right? Free account is compulsory. So assume that, sir, I created a free account. Assume I created a free account. Okay. I am not using a free account. I'm using uh, my, 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 uh, I'll show you what account I'm using in a minute. Kitty, is it possible to share between us this uh, user ID and password, something like that, Azure account specifically? 
because uh, if one person is getting for free we can use uh, from other person's id we can use it right the challenge here is sir the budget will remain the same right let's say we got 14400 and you are you are, you and somebody else is sharing so you should be very cautious about your spending because awesome. two people are sharing 7000 7000 is what the share ideal share means right like that sir. so sharing ideally is is <clears throat> tough maybe my opinion because you you can it becomes tough sir okay or unless you have a friend or someone who can in the group then that's all yeah yeah okay so we we'll talk about it this is just i'm just giving a clue at this moment we will do this practically again and just telling you that how do you need you need this all you need all the subscriptions or else it's stuff so after that comes concept called once you are subscribed once you are taken the free account portal.azure.com is the location you need to go it will not work for me got it it will not work for me sir but portal.azure.com because my account is my this email id is not registered yet so it will not work so what i will do i'll close here and i will use a different mail id and my different account sir and i'll i'll start practical from there whether you do i do first going into portal is compulsory you can play with portal just a second so i'll show you now just a second please so look at this If I type portal dot azure dot com, give me this one second. Give me a minute. So just give me this. Yes, sir. Please open it. Wait. Okay. one okay then sir and yeah, i think sir i just logged in nothing much i just logged in this is my home screen sir when you open azure portal this is the home screen you will get by as i said you can use your office mail id right now i'm using my office mail you can use your credit card that is also fine sir or there is one more option called msdn subscription so uh two minutes the so visual studio subscriptions you have with msdn subscription also you will get azure usage of uh $50 per month $100 per month or $150 per month so you have you have features like that so different ways you can get it but msd and subscription you have to buy so this option is out of scope so ignore it so two options you have sir use your office mail id and get your gold free account don't click on pay as you go please don't click on pay as you go click on free account only office account is also fine personal mail id with the credit card is also fine. you decide what you want to do i understand sir sometimes cards get exhausted sometimes you may we may not find another card or sometimes you don't have card you are the happiest person on this world you don't have a credit card ed we can see any billing desk sorry sir we can see any billing desk billing billing desk billing desk no not at all for a free account no billing risk at all it was there earlier durga earlier we had this actually uh, uh 4 5 years back 5 years back we had this billing risk you know what was the risk uh after one month usage they used to send a bill i've got personally a bill of 1 lakh 13000 once 
my friends have got um, uh, bills of 2.5 lakh also from aws not for azure so so later on sir um, amazon also microsoft also changed it whatever credit card you are supplying they are not if you are clicking on what sir free subscription no problem if you click on pay as you go the bill has to be paid if it is not pay as you go no problem uh, so what did you do to kd in that case you know of course i was i panicked and many people will panic we talked to the microsoft support customer care called them and discussed with them and they waived off the bill this was a mistake 5 years back so now it is not no risk of billing now no issues at all sir you just need this subscription so without subscription this course is tough you have to practice right every topic and 14400 is a good amount and and sharmat for you in us 200 dollars is a good deal 200 dollars with the 200 dollars amount we can explore lot of features almost every feature is what we can see uh, some features are tough to try but still most of the features will work are we good can we move on perfect done is there a question sir i can't hear you yes have you have a question i'm sorry okay let's move on so you saw me build a virtual machine now let's build a virtual machine on the cloud which takes hardly few minutes first let's build windows machine sir then we'll build linux machine both parallelly now one after another sir click on virtual machines vms uh, click on create okay i'll show you again go to home go back to home this is the home screen sir okay uh, on no point you will shortly get comfortable with all this interface sir it might look like a new world for some of us some of you know already some of you might not know but we will shortly become comfortable with all these options shortly before we start sir go to virtual machines click on create it's easier there or click on virtual machines create a new virtual machine your choice however you want to do here it is our starting concept we have to so our first conversation we have to start with this i'll go back to the powerpoint slides 5 minutes we'll spend on the powerpoint slides and come back again what you're building a vm now the first and foremost thing we all should know is what is deployment model in azure deployment models we have mainly two deployment models sir one is classic other one is arm and moreover classic is almost gone now so technically we can say we have only one deployment model called arm classic is still available i'll tell you what is classic and arm sir in in 2014 year almost like uh, how many years back 6 plus 28 years back they introduced this concept called resource manager azure resource manager so if you are building a vm a virtual machine technically what are you building sir if you are building a virtual machine technically what are you building technically when you are building a virtual machine technically what are we building sir cpu internally a virtual machine contains what sir cpu memory storage storage network network all these are sir in every virtual machine these are resources cpu storage network, network all these are resources sir. resources every virtual machine contains lots of resources cpu is one resource storage is one resource network is one resource and what not so you can keep multiple resources for it if you want so virtual machines contain different resources storage networks all these olden days sir when i say olden days pretty old earlier what they used to do is 
each resource was called it was created independently whenever you create a virtual machine cpu will be there network will be there storage will be there uh, ram whatever configuration you are selecting everything was called as a resource earlier now also they are calling it resource but earlier sir each was independent now you can create a resource group a group of resources uh what benefit will i get kid nothing sir uh, for example you want to delete a virtual machine you are creating but you want to delete a virtual machine in old earlier what you had to do delete storage separately delete network separately delete the vm delete every aspect separately every resource separately and do it now sir because you have a resource group all resources are part of that group just delete the resource group everything will go away not only deleting deleting is one example i am giving you want to change some properties earlier you have to change properties of every resource now you can do what apply the property on rg rg means resource group apply it on the resource group sir everywhere the property gets applied so as famous is an rgb tweak so so famous is a resource group rg concept in c++ sir uh, sorry in the azure specifically rg resource group is very very so it it it, it picked up a huge uh, response from 2014 because life cycle management became easy life cycle management sir similar category of uh, applications and all i can keep under one resource group they have a life span of 2 years 3 years tracking is easy you will see all the benefits shortly so resource group is an ex excellent concept and i think microsoft did a very good job in doing rather than treating independently keeping them under one rg was a great 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 move in 2014 okay so in simple words what is a resource group resource group is a container where you can keep all your resources i'll show a small picture sir that can be and by the way classic means old style classic is a old style a uh, resource group is a modern style from 2014 right sir any time you can go from classic to old one to new one new to old you can't go meaning resource group resource manager arm to classic model you can't change so when creating virtual machine they will ask you when creating virtual machine they'll ask you hey do you want classic virtual machine old style or you want latest virtual machine resource group but kd stop where did it ask it never ask so it directly keeping what default is what now default resource is what group. now resource, resource group kd where is classic nothing sir click on the click on the search on the top type virtual machines and so wait sir can you see here virtual machines normal and virtual machines classic classic it's still available so classic is a old deployment model and we don't use it now and default is new deployment model only sir so so you got my point now two deployment yes. models we have classic and arm arm is nothing but azure resource manager so resource manager and resource group is there any difference between them ah the resource manager is the overall model sir inside that resource group is a concept so so arm is a resource model azure resource manager is a model inside that resource group is a concept resources are also a concept a group of resources are called as resource group i will show you now sir let's do one thing we are creating a virtual machine now right i'll give a name for the resource group let's let's put a name there are a lot of other names which are there ignore them those are my internal names so you can ignore i'll create a new name kd i have a question uh, is this um, you know um the classic and the arm uh, is is this specific to the virtual machines uh, or under compute we just have this uh, deployment model or is it common for all the it's a common virtual... concept for applications also all... it's a common concept for databases also it's a common concept for virtual machines also common concept for uh, scale sets also so everything can be kept answer inside one resource group no, no. i i show a picture actually it's a good question before we I'll show you something. Can you see here? Uh, just to answer your question exclusively, if you can see, there is one application in the cloud, there is a mm -hmm. virtual machine in the cloud, and there is one database in the cloud, right? Uh, so one of some something is IaaS and something is PaaS. That's all okay. Now, if you can look at all of them, these three resources are part of what? One resource. Okay. Or, or you can do it the other way. There are three separate resource group for each. Mm -hmm. 
same picture, same representation, three separate resource group for each for database, a separate resource group for application, a separate resource group for a virtual machine, separate resource group. You can configure like that also. Why do we keep them under our common resource group? Because they have a common purpose, meaning this application, this virtual machine, and this database have a common purpose, common goal. They all work for one specific project in a company. So then I will prefer to keep them all under one resource group. So building also becomes easy. Okay. And this bill goes to only that project, not for other projects. So there are many reasons why we maintain resource groups. Okay. So did you all get the point? It was a good question. So, and before we go to that question also, so you can give a name for a resource group. So what I'll do sir, for my, for our ease of understanding, I'll call it as KDI uh, um, uh, 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 RG1, maybe my first RG or second RG or whatever you want to call. All, is that okay? Any questions? Just, sir, that's it. Nothing much. Resource group name you have to give. And sir, when I give a resource group name, you are creating a virtual machine, right, sir? In this virtual machine, CPU, memory, IO, hard drive, network, whatever comes, right? All of them will go and sit in this resource group. That's all. Sir. And uh, this is located in which location? I kept South uh, East Asia. East Asia means Japan, I think. I, I will, I'll put the uh, VM in the correct location. I'll change now, sir. Next, we are going there. So any questions on the resource group concept to start with? So this region part, uh, how is it? Uh, your voice is a little low, I'm sorry. Uh, region part, how is it? How are you selecting? Uh, we, we, are, we are going for region. So first, we'll, we'll complete the total discussions about resource group, and then we'll go to the region. I want to talk about a few slides about okay. resource group. Just give me a second, sir. I'm in. Thank you. Yes, please. So then let's talk about a couple of couple of quick points. Sir. Every ARM resource exists. Sir. If you have a resource, the resource can be part of the, you cannot have one resource in two resource groups. Sir. That's not possible practically, right? If there's a resource, you either belong here or you belong there. One resource cannot be part of two resource groups. Impossible. You agree? Yeah, quick fundamentals, sir. Quickly, we'll wrap it up and move on. Resources can be moved anytime between resource groups. If my resource is present in this resource group, I can move it, sir, if you want. It's possible to. Okay? Perfect. Sir, resources in a resource group share a common life cycle. Life cycle means this application, some XYZ application related, all VM, storage, network, everything is in present one resource group, sir. This application in the company will run for 10 years. The life cycle is 10 years. 10 years they'll work together or five years or six years, whatever it's a company now. So life cycle is there. So if you're keeping a couple of people together, they have a life cycle. They live for X, X amount of time or Y amount of time. So that's all. Moving on. A few technologies. Sir. Resource means CPU, network, storage, the database, anything. So all these come web application virtual machine, all these come as resources only. Right, sir? Perfect. Resource group means group of resources. Resource provider, who is providing that? Who is giving that resource? Microsoft is giving it. So resource providers we have. Template, ARM template, I will tell you later, sir. It comes at the last of the discussion. So this last two lines ignore for now. The first three are important. You should know what is a resource, resource group, or resource provider. Who is providing that resource? Sir, uh, the, the reason why resource group is so successful is previously, previously, Charmat, if I want to grant you access on database, I have to give you access on database separately. If I want to access, give you permissions on application, I have to give you access on application separately and virtual mission separately. Now, after resource group concept came, what can I do? I can give you permission on 
resource group so you get permission you get automatically on everything that is one more reason called our back role based access control that is one more advantage of resource groups sir. so i see i can skip it and move on sir but just telling you what are the advantages of having resource group if i make durga as an admin of a resource group sir administrator role on a resource group he can access all the resources in that resource group if i make him administrator so roles concept is coming up shortly in security sir we'll talk about that please wait till then done thank you sir uh one last point with this resource group concept is complete one last slide sir one last point also if you are looking at this one right sir my network is present in a separate resource group network okay and my storage is present in a separate resource group and my website is present in a separate resource group database is present in a separate resource group or maybe all of them together right sir uh, and virtual machines also virtual machines it's not about who is present where so uh, a virtual machine can access a, so i mean to say somebody if it's not about accessibility you can be present in any resource group so people sitting in one resource group can't access others is wrong perception resource group is logically you are grouping them that's all access wise if you give permissions anybody sitting in any resource group can access other resource group data also access and uh, sir access and resource group is is not interconnected access is different resource group is you are segregating hey, you belong to this part so you know uh, we have caste system right that doesn't mean that one caste people don't talk to other caste come on we don't have that rules at all or one religion people don't talk to another religion religion is just a group of similar mindset people sitting together and uh, whatever they want to do right so so that's all sir that doesn't mean that other one religion stops talking to another religion no way so so access has nothing to do with classification okay that's all that's all i'm saying see network is present in a separate resource group communications will still work without any problem sir so irrespective of where you keep where no problem you can keep anything anywhere you want access is not the concern at all grouping is not the whole purpose of resource group is grouping and i am done sir any questions you have you can ask else i'll move to the next one all good the next one it's a demo but i'll go for a demo so before i hit the demo i want you all to look at this one globally microsoft has set up multiple data centers numerous data centers now how many as per the picture how many do you see so if you quickly count also these all these all these all these all these, all these. globally rough estimate rough count quick Uh, uh, rough 40, count. Forty. 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 Fifty. Fifty. Okay. So why why rough estimations? So we'll go for exact estimations. Go to Google and search for Azure. Sir, sir, please search for. Hey, I'm, we're talking about something important, sir. Requesting all of you. People who are on camera, I'm seeing you. Others, please be focused. Azure Global Infrastructure. So please search for Azure Global Infrastructure, sir. That's a link that you will get. Uh, and uh, uh, these are some data centers. I want to give some internal terminology shortly. But first, let's talk about data centers, how they look at all data. But first, let's look at the overall. How many are there, sir? Sixty. So globally, Microsoft has chosen sixty regions, sixty locations across one forty countries. I think. Okay, how is it possible, man? Sixty locations means it will be sixty countries, or each country one location. Not like that, sir. If you can see, I I can show in the explanation part better. Oh. See, sir. First of all, what is, uh, sir? These are sir, today by end of the class, you will be comfortable with all these terms. That's my guarantee. Give me a few minutes more, and sir, let's be so strong that anybody brings this word in future, we should be like you know, it should be imprinted in our minds. First one, sir, global infrastructure. Of course, the global infrastructure of Microsoft. AWS also will have global infrastructure. Amazon's. We will do that. We will see that little later. First, let let's look at ours. How many data centers Microsoft has, sir? How many? 
200 plus data centers they have. It is in what, 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 what did you say 60 regions then on the top? Okay, so that means there are some technologies we should understand. So what is a region? So let me put, let me take a small notepad and let's write down a couple of questions. Sir. First of all, what is a data center? As per Microsoft, I'm saying, okay, what is my, what is Azure data center? Okay, next technology, what is a Azure region, correct sir? What is Azure global infrastructure? So these are the, these are some answers that we want. Okay, and then go back. Yes, sir. Then they have what is what next word? What is Azure geography? Uh, it's there in the content as well. You will see it. Huh? Azure geography. And then what's up? Availability zones. So now these words we have to understand. So let's go one by one. First one, I would prefer to use this word called Azure Global Infrastructure. So uh, if you can explore the explore the globe option, if you click it, you will see the it's loading. Just give it a second. If you also want to open in your PC, please open. Sir. You also want to, yeah, look at this one, sir. So if you, I think I love this uh, way of Microsoft's representation. Amazon doesn't also have this. Yeah, look at this one. Sir. This is the overall Azure global infrastructure of Microsoft. If you can uh, close this and yeah, you can rotate the globe and see what is present where, sir. How many did they have a lot of, so again, there are a lot of further discussions we have to do on this, but this is the overall global infrastructure of Microsoft. All their data centers are connected with high speed undersea cables. They have spent so much money and very strong and very fast and very robust network that they have deployed. Uh, I'm not saying only Microsoft alone, even AWS has done it, sir, but I'm just talking about Microsoft to start with. Any questions? Global infrastructure is this. KD uh, abbreviation. Let's write a one line about it. Azure global infrastructure is made of how many, sir? Made of two key components. Physical infrastructure and network components. Physical infrastructure. Physically, they have kept servers everywhere. And networks. The network is also a very strong uh, um, uh, part of Azure. Uh, apply, click on filters here. You have filters. You can select what you want, sir. You can apply filters and you can select what you want. Okay, see now, just look at this. If I remove networking option here, you will see the cables going away. So later on, play around with it. When you find time, just sit and play around with it. Sir. So net, now, that means this is overall network. From where to where, how network is passing by is what I'm talking about. Overall network. So if you read the definition now, sir. Global infrastructure is what of, consists of what? Servers plus network. How many data centers they have? 200. So I'll write down one line, sir. Azure Global Infrastructure has a 200 plus data centers, right, sir? And a very strong network foundation. That's all. That's all. This is, if somebody asks me, I will, I will give, prefer to say, what is Azure Global Infrastructure? Azure Global Infrastructure contains of 200 plus data centers across the globe. This will be my answer. Any questions, anybody? Can I move on? Okay, so perfect. Next, next immediate question, sir. What do you mean by data center? Okay, go back to the document only so you have the answer there itself. What is Azure data center? They are buildings. Each data center is one building, sir. Located all over the globe. So one data center represents one building. Am I clear? Now, Katie, how does the building look like? Sir, I showed the picture a few seconds back. Tell me if you want to play me the video, I'll play the video at the last. But is this not one building? Yeah, okay. Can I call that as a data center? Absolutely, you can call it as one data center. So in one region, in one area, there might be multiple buildings or not one building alone. Microsoft does keep multiple buildings. So in a region, so region is nothing but what? Collection of? 
collection of data centers that's it collection of data centers so what is the region sir then it's what is the data center sir it's a building it's a building it's a building, it's a building. so i'm i'm just quickly copying the one line abbreviations azure data centers are unique buildings that's all in one line unique physical buildings which contain the infrastructure or servers or something like that or we can directly write uh, physical, uh, infrastructure. physical infrastructure your choice sir. any i think you're joining from two pieces right uh, it is going from the stack piece to this piece but yeah so uh, uh, is it is clear sir next question azure region sir first uh, it's it's there only region a region is set of data centers set of buildings or set of data centers put together and sir but that is not the main line this is the main word sir azure region is set of data centers deployed within latency low latency very sir they are next to each other so the performance between those buildings will be very fast because they are next to each other very low latency networks sir. they are very very fast so sharmat if you are creating one virtual machine in one building and another virtual machine in another building for example you will not know when we create by the way which is going where but example i am saying one vm is in one building another vm is in another building because they are in the same region they will be communicating very fastly between them extremely fast but they are next to each other uh, any questions sir i'll can i go fast now so global infrastructure overall 200 plus data centers each data center is one building nothing but one building in one region you may have one building or multiple buildings next one sir. geography so uh, i think geography is definitely a groupism right uh, a classification given by microsoft and i am sure you also know a lot of geographies sir apac asia pacific emea middle east americas so globally if you if you just go and search the word called uh, uh, geographies not 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 microsoft terminology sir but geographies one second so if you look at uh, overall maps uh, overall map every every continent is broken into pieces right sir i mean total globe is broken into continents and they call it geographies right A africa uh, asia asia pacific we all come under asia pacific who are staying in india and singapore and china and all these countries so so that's what i'm calling sir so likewise microsoft has done what sir microsoft also has split their data center into geographies which i can show you now if you want look at this one sir the white the white uh, you want that so sorry shape uh, rhombus rhombus thank you struggling so so yeah so if you can see this rhombus white rhombus that represents each one geography so i i will remove all of them sir i'll remove rest all i'll just keep one geographies can you see microsoft has done what sir the whole globe they have split into geographies different locations can you still confusing acha okay then let's go to then let's go to the same website sir click on geographies you can see all the names of the geographies they'll show you see here sir asia pacific is one geography australia is one geography china is one geography sir under china there are multiple regions agree all regions under china they kept under one china geography india is one geography we have three data centers sir one in mumbai one in pune and one in chennai hyderabad coming up shortly if there was four right there is one more yeah, there was mumbai also one year. did they disband it okay so uh, i'm so sorry mumbai data center was there i think it was a collaboration with uh, geo reliance data center looks like they have closed it down i am i'm just guessing sir i have to check back later after the class but earlier if you look at it, if you, it's the same screen if you looked at it uh, five months before five months before sir there was one mumbai one pune and one chennai we had three three data centers now what happened is mumbai is missing and i knew sir when you google it you'll see uh, microsoft and uh, reliance had a collaboration there i looks like i don't know i'm just guessing the collaboration is broken or something and now they are coming up with a new data center in hyderabad Uh, and this was already signed by KCR. It was, in, it was in the news also recently. So, any questions, sir?
the India is one geography is what I'm saying. Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, Taiwan, all these are different geographies we have. The total geographies are these. Americas also you have, Australia, uh, your choice. Any questions? And the United yeah. States, yes, please. Hyderabad, there is no scene and reading how they are building. Okay, so, so could be infrastructure is strong, possible, but normally you are right. Normally what companies do is they prefer to keep data centers close to the sea because you have under, under sea cables and latency will be performing very good, but maybe Hyderabad already has got a higher infrastructure. Maybe we don't know. And Microsoft already has got a big campus in Hyderabad. There could be different reasons behind it. We don't know. Gachiboli, right? In that place, they have this huge. We don't know where they are setting up, but maybe no idea. So, can we move on first? Next point. So, what is? So, how do we define geography now? Quickly. So, one line, one line answer. Geography. One line answer for geography. One line answer. Anything that comes to your mind, your own answer, I'm saying. Collection of region. Easy answer, right? Eh? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, official definition is this one. So, collection of regions. Group of regions, one or two, multiple. So, India, we have three data centers. India is one geography. Uh, you saw China. China had nearly around six, six or five or six uh, regions. So, one region, so one data center means one building. Multiple data centers together is called one region. Multiple regions can be called as one geography. But, sir, geography is not about multiple regions only. Geography is about other conditions also. Other conditions like rules. So India data must not cross India. State Bank of India, for example, tomorrow, uh, uh, not State Bank, but uh, let's say private bank. Give me one example of private banks uh, in India. Let's say uh, yeah, HDFC Bank. HDFC Bank wants to have a tie-up with the Microsoft Azure and they want to deploy everything in Azure. They want to move cloud-based 100%. So what is that, sir? It's a collaboration. But HDFC customers' data, can it cross India? No. Indian customers' data must be in India. So now they are they want to keep it in Azure. So they will keep it in Chennai, or they'll keep it in Mumbai or Pune, or they may keep it in Hyderabad once Hyderabad, Hyderabad data center comes up. So that's what they have to plan. Sir. So it's ruled, it's not, it's not only about group of regions together, it's not about only multiple regions, not just group of regions, but to follow compliance boundaries. And sir, you need to follow the residency rules. You can't cross countries' data. So geographies were designed keeping that also in mind. China data must be in China only. India data must be in India only. So in Zoom also, we have a wonderful option. You're aware, right? I, I don't know if you're aware or not. This was introduced after the issues came by because you all know, right? Zoom data, all our data was going into China and storing in China servers. It was a big issue uh, uh, during COVID time, during pandemic especially. And immediately Zoom rectified the issues and did what? They gave an option in Zoom. You can select an option. I don't want my data to be stored outside the India data center. So it will store in India only. They have made that change already. Okay, that's anyways. Uh, geography is that. And last but not the least, sir, availability zones. Uh, as we are at the end of the class, I would prefer to talk about availability zone concept tomorrow. Not today, because it requires detailed explanation. And sir, before we do it, can I show you one more important point now? Let's go back to the slides once. No, not sites, I'm sorry, uh, demo ones. Shall we create the virtual machine now? Yeah, so uh, given name, so first of all, what option did we select? Resource group, resource group, done. Next option, sir, give a name for a virtual machine. So KD-VM1, or maybe, sir, it's a Windows VM, right? WinVM1, I'll call with that name. If you guys have no objection, I'm calling it as KD-WinVM1. Perfect, next word, sir, location where you want to keep it. I would want to keep it in. You tell me, sir. Where shall I keep? Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific, sir. Uh, your choice. I mean, anywhere, anywhere you want to keep, I can keep there. Look at this. All the locations that we talked, right? So brackets. You have what? 
country. Uh -huh. Correct. But in brackets, what is mentioned, sir? Geography. 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 And East US and all are nothing but regions. Regions. East US is one region. Uh, and East US 2 is one more region. That means in that region, in that location, they have kept two data centers, East US and East US 2. West US 2, West US 3, and like that, sir. And depending on the country to country. And where is India? So look, Asia Pacific. Where is India? India data centers. India, India. South India? South West India. India? Only two we have. Right, sir? To India. So I can pick anything, right? So your choice, sir, which you want to pick. Normally, what I do is I select, I prefer to select uh, Southeast Asia. Don't ask me why, sir, because Singapore is my favorite place. That's why I'm selecting. Other than that, I have no other reason. And, sir, more, not only that, uh, Southeast Asia is a, the data center is very good, sir. Till now, I've never faced any issue. All features work there perfectly without any problem. Only after that observation, I'm using Southeast Asia. You use whatever you like. And Sharmat, wherever you're located, East US or West US, you can pick the East Coast or West Coast. You pick whichever you like. And then, sir, uh, zone concept I have not explained, right? Availability zone concept comes tomorrow. We'll discuss this tomorrow. But as of today, three technologies, of global infrastructure, 200 plus data centers. 200 plus data centers. Total, total. Data, meaning buildings. I mean buildings. Uh, and then... Uh, how many geographies? Uh, sorry, how many regions? 60 plus regions. 200 plus data centers, 60 plus regions we have. Geographies you can count, sir. I don't have time. We didn't, if you want to count, you can count. I did not count. That's it. Data center means one building, sir. Region means group of buildings. Uh, geography means group of regions. But not only group of regions. So one more answer you have to tell. Defined by certain rules. Certain rules, compliance, boundaries. boundaries. Those words you can use. Huh? Sorry. Certain protocols. A little louder. Voice is breaking. The protocols. No, with some with some some compliance. We can say compliance is the best word. So easy word. Compliance and boundaries. Geography is nothing but group of regions. Controlled by compliance and boundaries. That's all. In simple words. Again, I'm giving on my own words. That answer is always there. Bookish answer. That's all. And uh, uh, zone, I will tell you tomorrow. So. To zone is a wonderful concept and I'm sure you will like it. Let's talk tomorrow. And, and so after that, we have some more options we have to provide and VM will be created. Five minutes. VM creation is five minutes. But understanding all the concepts will take a little time. So I think then with that, uh, any, any questions anybody has? Sir? So those are the abbreviations on the screen. Uh, I'll put it in the content as well. You can see it from there. And uh, geographies we covered. This we'll cover tomorrow. If you have any questions, you can ask, sir. But I'll, uh, by the way, sorry, yesterday also 10 minutes lost. Today also 10 minutes lost. I will try my best to be on time. Just give me a few days. There's an important topic going on at the, the other back. So questions are flowing beyond the nine boundary. That's why it's taking time too. And I can't stop a question. That's my weakness. So. Any other questions, please? No, okay. not for today then. Okay, then so then then we will then we will uh, move into. Anyways, we started the VMs. Let's go deep into VMs and let's talk more. And so this is just the beginning. We are scratching the surface. We did not go deep at all. We're just scratching the surface for your kind of information. So then let's reconnect tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Signing off. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.